Hi everyone, it's Dixon here and today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new MacBook Air M1. I went for the 16GB 8-core GPU version with 1TB hard drive and I've been testing this for the past 3 weeks now. So, let's take a look and see what I think. At a glance, you won't actually realise that this MacBook Air is any different to the older versions for the past couple of years or so. It's still got the same aluminium design that its predecessors have had. And when we open up and actually take a look at the screen, you'll notice that, in my opinion, the bezels are still quite large. So if you compare this to the likes of the Dell XPS, the Dell XPS is far more modern looking. It's got much thinner bezels. Even these monitors behind me have much thinner bezels than the MacBook Air. In terms of connectivity, all we have is the headphone jack on one side, and then on the other side are the Thunderbolt connections, also compatible with USB-C. So there's only two of these, and they're both on the left side of the laptop. So for some of you, it may be a bit annoying not having the option to choose between one side or the other. One of the most pleasant things that I've enjoyed when I've been using this MacBook Air is that it really is always on as advertised. So I would compare this to the likes of the iPad, as soon as I open up that lid, the screen is ready to go. It wakes up immediately. And then using my finger, I just rest it on the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks instantly without any delay. So it just really makes it easy to pick it up on the fly and start using your MacBook as and when required. And it's because of features like this with the laptop, it makes me consider why I still need to use my iPad on certain occasions, which is kind of funny because the argument's normally been the other way around with the iPad is now overtaking the laptop. I've been really impressed with the screen on this laptop, so it doesn't have anything groundbreaking in you compared to the older models, so it's not something like mini LED, but the colors are fantastic. It's very vibrant, so when we look at photos and videos, such as when we're in Venice, these look fantastic, and in terms of responsiveness on screen, everything plays nicely. So anything from watching videos on YouTube in high definition to watching my own videos taken on my iPhone. I'm a huge fan of ergonomics. It's very important, particularly now as we're tending to work from home more and more, especially given the current year that we've had. And I'm pleased to say that the keyboard is really nice to use. You get a nice sense of depth as you're pressing the buttons. The back lighting on the keyboard looks great and you can of course adjust that and it just lights up on the actual letters or numbers or symbols and no longer bleeds lighting around the buttons like on the much older MacBooks like my six-year-old MacBook Pro. And I found it very responsive. The trackpad has plenty of space and of course it does have that sort of haptic feedback as well. It feels great to use. It feels very light so you can easily pick this up and put it in your bag or carry it around with no issues. And again, coming back to my earlier point, this still makes me question now, which product do I want to take with me? Is it going to be my iPad Pro or my MacBook Air? Because actually, because it's so light and ready to go whenever I want, this has actually resulted in me using my iPad less and less over the past few weeks, something I wasn't expecting to feel using it. So one of the key things you're going to be wanting to find out is the performance on this MacBook Air. So you've probably seen countless videos online of the base model MacBook Air with the seven core GPU and eight gig of RAM. And to be honest with you, they've had fantastic results. It all looks great. I personally bought the 16 gigabyte eight core GPU version because I wanted to use this for my YouTube channel. The sole purpose really of using this for 4K video editing. I've been using DaVinci Resolve 17.1, so this has been optimized for the M1 chip. You can view my video, which is popping up on screen now, and I go into more detail about the performance and how that runs with things like the 4K itself, plus fusion effects, so it's slightly more labor intensive. But I've been incredibly impressed and I've tested this as much as I can. My biggest fear when I went to purchase this was, should I have bought the MacBook Pro? Do I need that fan? When I'm doing 4K video editing for a couple of hours or so, what's it going to be like? Am I going to regret it? Is it going to throttle the performance? And I'm very pleased to say that it hasn't had that whatsoever. It just doesn't seem to get hot. It has no fan, so it can't cool itself down anyway. I've never experienced this laptop getting anything much hotter than like a leftover coldish cup of coffee, just as a comparison for you, no other way to explain it. 
And bearing in mind, I've been testing this every time I do editing or my recording even now, I have this connected to two dual monitors which are a high resolution and it's still not had an impact. I've tested this also even today. I had a one hour Zoom call using video full screen on one of my monitors and then I loaded up pretty much every other app I could get my hands on. So messages, WhatsApp, photos, GarageBand, pages, everything I could do, I loaded up in the background and it just didn't have any impact. I had DaVinci Resolve in the background with 4K content. I had iMovie running at the same time, Safari. It just does not seem to slow down. So I had that fear that 16 gigabyte may even still slow down, but there's just absolutely no issues. And I'm just so pleased that I've not had that regret of, should I got that MacBook Pro over this? I think this is perfectly adequate, albeit if you do want to do stuff that's perhaps fusion and special effects heavy for things like proper movie editing and fancy effects, then you're going to potentially need that MacBook Pro because it will start to get warm when it's doing the rendering. Also to note, so of course, this is a different type of chip in the device. So this is why it's been performing fantastically. And for that reason, it is worth noting that some apps have been optimized for the M1 chip. Naturally, all of the built-in apps such as the messages and so forth is all optimized. But there are other apps which are still set up and optimized for the Intel chips on the older generation of the MacBooks. And you will be able to see this when you click into the get info on your applications. It will show you if it's optimized for Intel or the silicon chip. But in terms of performance, again, I've loaded all of these. So even simple apps like Spotify optimized for Intel, they all load incredibly quickly and I've never had any issues. I previously ran DaVinci 16 it was slower to load up than the 17.1 version optimized for the M1 chip, but nothing horrendous, nothing upsetting in any shape or form. And so I've been incredibly pleased. If you've been looking around online, you'd have heard lots of controversy over the webcam built into the laptop. So I have mixed feelings with this. I personally think it's actually pretty good in general. I want to put emphasis on that in general. So when there's good lighting, so during the day or when you've got lots of lights on at home, it's pretty good. And I do weekly calls with my Spanish tutor and I also have a weekly call with my Spanish brother-in-law and I tested it with him. I said, so what's the quality like now? I had some simple lighting on in the background and he said in his words, it's pretty good to be honest. What you'll see in this clip is actually I compared FaceTime with Skype and Zoom. And for some reason, maybe it's just me, let me know what you think in the comments. I think that actually using the FaceTime app, quality of my face actually looks a bit worse than how it performs in Skype and Zoom. So maybe this is just me. Again, see what you think having a look on screen now and let me know what you think about the difference. But I've been very pleased with how it performs in my Zoom and Skype calls much better than what I was expecting. In terms of the quality, it's still a 720p camera. The reason why it's better as well, even though it technically it has the same camera as the older generation laptop, is because of the software now. It actually means that it can enhance the lighting similar to what we've come to expect on our iPhones or iPad devices. Another pleasant surprise when I've been using this MacBook is the quality of the speakers. So it's such a thin device and to be honest, I don't really care too much about the speakers. I'm not gonna be walking around my house and listening to music on full blast, but it does sound really good. Bass gives some real depth to the overall sound. It seems to separate different sounds very nicely and I've been very pleased with it. So if I'm quickly watching a YouTube video or a trailer on my MacBook, it does sound pretty good and I've been very impressed with that. Another huge selling point for these has always been the battery life. So Apple boasts around 18 hours and they say it is an all day battery. It is definitely an all day battery. I just find it difficult to actually get the battery to get to a low point. The battery is fantastic. If I had to summarize, I would say it's comparable to the likes of the iPad. A good example, I did a mini test. So on one of my Skype calls, this lasts for a full one hour and I also had Safari open in the background. So the battery started at 74% and then ended at 60%. So that's only 14% after a solid one hour Skype call in full HD on screen, which I think is really good. 
Another big question you're going to be asking yourself is, well, should I go for the 8 gig or 16 gig? Should I go for 7 core or 8 core GPU? Being completely honest, I say that despite loading up all of the apps, 4K video editing, some basic fusion effects and everything else, I have struggled to actually properly challenge this MacBook. And my advice is, well, 8 gigabytes will probably be absolutely fine for your regular day-to-day -day use. But if you're thinking about having this for quite some time like me, or perhaps you want to do more strenuous stuff like video editing, I strongly advise 16 gigabytes if you can afford that extra bit of cash. And I would say when you're looking at the specs, the RAM is probably the most important upgrade that you're going to choose among everything. Things like the SSD hard drive space. Yes, you won't be able to upgrade that, but equally you can plug in an external hard drive later down the line if you're really struggling. And then with the eight core GPU versus seven core GPU, I'd say that's much more specifically for people that want to actually, of course, do some graphic editing. So things like Photoshop or video editing, like what I've been doing. Something also to consider is that the expression is SOC, which is system on a chip. It means that you cannot later upgrade the RAM or anything else on that chip. So something to bear in mind and why it's such an important decision now. So I've covered quite a lot and I've shared a lot of my feelings. I've had this for over a few weeks now. And personally, I've thoroughly enjoyed having my MacBook Air. I do not regret purchasing this over a MacBook Pro. I just don't need it. Again, it never overheats. The performance has been fantastic. It feels great to use. I've managed to get this working on dual monitors, which has been a big plus, and I just thoroughly recommend this product. So I've covered as much as I think is important right now, but obviously if you have any questions, please feel free to post them down below. I'll be happy to answer. Or if there's any ideas you may have in terms of testing this further over the coming weeks, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be keen to see what you have to say. I hope you found this useful. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.